Confession to you this morning. Forever we stand with you. We have declared with our heart, even if there is money, there is no money. Even if it pleases to us, if we are satisfied with it or not. Because it is your decision. We will not turn back. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. I need only piano and sax, please. Sing hallelujah. To the Lord, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing. Thank you. We magnify your holy name. We thank you, Lord. We magnify your holy name. We thank you. Everyone lift up your voice and begin to appreciate God this morning as a point of serenity to his authority. Give him more praise today, the Emmanuel, the immortal, the invisible, the holy wise God, the Lord who has been watching you, who has kept you from the beginning of this year to now. Find us loving. You have known some people that are no more. Their position is off, but God has been keeping you. Find us love the Lord from your heart. 
Love him and give him praise. Hallelujah be to your holy name. Thank you for another day and great opportunity that we have. Be thou glorified. Have your will, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, you may take your seat. I want to appreciate God for his faithfulness. It has been the awesomeness of our God for us to be alive. And I say, may his name be glorified in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for today. In our little way, we have come to relate with him, to talk with him, and also to connect to him. May his name be glorified. If you want to shout amen, shout amen. amen. By the grace of God, I have this word of assurance, which I titled, Don't Wash Your Net Yet. Don't Wash Your Net Yet. Everyone must follow me with this word. And please, I want this word to be so great. And I want everyone to connect to this. Tell, tell your neighbor, say, don't wash your net yet. Luke 5, 1 to 7. Can we read it together very loud and clear? One to go. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesis, uh huh, and saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would toss out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Verse 4, loud and clear. Now, when he was less speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and lay down the net for a draught. Five together. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toyed all the night and have taken nothing, nevertheless, at thy word, I will lay down the net, and when they have this done, they enclose a great multitude of fishes, and their net, net break, and their net break, seven together, and they beckon unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and fit board the ship so that they began to sink. <clears throat> Tell that person, say, don't wash your net yet. I want you to understand that this message will guide you to have rethink of what you have proposed in your mind contrary to how it should be. We need to know something about God. Know that Jesus could not meet Peter in another way, but he just wants him to know that every of your labor is in my hands. The profit of all your labor, I can give you the profit. Hello? One of the greatest problems of this generation is they want to get everything working at the same time. And this is the reason nothing is working. This net is not catching the fish. 
If their net is not catching any other fish, they retire to another water. Problem of so many people in this generation is they are quick to change water. Do you hear me? Just they are quick to take very wrong decision that will not work. They quickly wash their net and go to another water. They are not getting their desired expectation now. They desire to change immediately without thinking retreat. Oh, it's not coming now. I go this way. And this is the reason you see a lot of people, they try so many things. It's not still working for them because of what? They have not asked, how should I go? They have not requested from the Lord, what should I do? How should I follow this standard? They jump into changing of environment, changing of ministry, changing of marital institution or institution, and are ready to disown their parents. They tell their parents, you are no longer my parents. You are no longer my father. They are no longer my mother. So second thing they do, they start suspecting everyone around them, including their spouse, their healers, their pastors, their neighbors, their bosses, and many discoveries. Because of what? They love to do what? They love to change to wash their net. Don't wash your net simply means, number one, do not jump into conclusion yet. A lot of people are easily concluded. When it is not working, they conclude, oh, this is not the way it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be. Do not conclude yet. Number two, do not give up. Number three, don't watch your net. Simply means, do not lose hope. When it is not working, it could be a time that God is trying to train you for patience, how to have patience. But a lot of people, because of what, they have developed a particular system in their mind and they'll be saying, oh, patience is out of it. Oh, we cannot have that patience. Oh, the journey for patient land is too far for me. But five, don't say I cannot make it. Don't ever say I cannot make it. Don't wash your net. You have gone to school, work is not coming, nothing is coming forth. You don't need to retire to something that does not watch what you have seen. Are you see here? You have seen something. You need to look at what you have seen. And number six, don't say it is not possible for me because it has not been possible for other people. Hey. For the fact marriage is not working. Here it is. For the fact your business is not working. Look at me. For the fact something is not working. And you look at yourself say, because it has not worked for Tolu, it cannot work for Tola. Here it is. You do not have the same configuration. I you see here? So the life you have come to live is not a life of Tolu. You are not living life for your pastor. As a matter of fact, you are not living life for anybody. You are living life for God. No wonder the scripture says, what shall separate me from the love of God? Is it persecution? Is it peri? Is it hunger? Is it money? He said, in all of this, all, calculate everyone. I say, in all of this, don't ever say it's not possible. Number seven, don't say I cannot get there. Okay? Don't wash your net. When you wash your net, you are saying, I cannot get there. Thank God they have washed your net and Jesus stepped in. He has been watching them. I remember when Apostle Paul said, in the Bible, in the book of John, when he said, I want to return back for fishing. Jesus, after Jesus has gone and revealed himself to them, when Apostle uh, Peter said, or Paul said, I'm, I say, okay, Peter said, I'm going back to fishing. He was not saying anything. But before they got there, he was already there. He had already prepared fish and bread. When the other one, you know, I read the scripture about a particular apostle. They said, the one that Jesus loved. Have you read it in the scripture before? 
I started studying about that one that Jesus loved. Or if we say the one that Jesus loved, we talk about Peter. When you say the one that Jesus loved, who is this person? But his name was not, I must not mention. I have to study further to got to know that it's John the Beloved. The author of the book of Revelation. So he heard this. He said to Peter, I said, is the master I'm seeing. And Peter have to use net to cover himself and dive into the sea. But he had this. He also said, come all of you. By the time they got there, he has already prepared what, uh, a particular place for them to warm. Number two, a particular place for them to eat. And a particular place for them. He served them communion. And he said to Peter, do you love me more than this? He said, Lord, I love you. Do you love this thing more than this? The Bible said when he asked the third time, Peter was angry. He was angry because of what? He knew the heart of a man. Hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Jesus understands. So there is no how a man should come to you and tell you to give up. When they bring the message of giving up, he say, I did not see that in my record. Oh my God, somebody didn't understand. When they tell you, give up on this matter, I say, no, I didn't see it. When they say, it can't work here, I didn't see it. When they say, nothing grow here, you tell them, I didn't see it. I was sent to this place and I know anywhere I go, something must grow. Are you see here in me? Here this throw a man of covenant into a place. Here this. It might be as if it is not working. A time will come that covenant will speak. Oh my God. When you throw me into a place, you go with me. You just give me gari and, and uh, fish, roasted fish. I will survive. I don't need any other thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? With the grace I carry, I don't need to read what I carry in manner. God has given me grace. Eh? I call you. So I don't need to carry a computer before I operate in what God has given to me. So you have to know what is that thing that you carry. You have to know. Here it is. Peter said, according to the law of fishing, we cannot catch anything here. But when Jesus said, launch it to this side, listen to this, it was against the law of fishing. And here it is. All the fishes do meeting. The one in Abraka, the one in Osun State, every fish is just come together and say, Master is calling us. And they arrive at the spot. And they enclose what they could not get at the very time that the fish supposed to come. That was the time they supposed to get there. But the time that Jesus said you should launch it was a wrong time for fishing. It's to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you thought it's going to work might not be the agenda of God for you. Oh my God, somebody's not getting me. When you say, when men say it is handed, when men say it cannot work, men when say nothing can work for you anymore, that's when God come and say, I have come as Omega. I have come as Messiah. I've come as Emmanuel. I've come as the one who see what no man can see. I've come as the deliverer. It will come according to the situation and present thing that you, you think that you cannot get. This is the word of God. I've hidden your word in my heart. No power can change your word out of me. I carry something that others don't carry. When they see me, they see something. When they walk closer to me, they see something. When they walk around me, they see something. When they see, they get it. And they ask you, how are you doing it? You tell them, I've got my mind made up. I cannot turn back. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh my God. They said to that man in the book of John chapter 9. How, how come do you stand up? And he said, a man called Jesus came. I didn't beckon on him. He came around. Oh my God. You are blind. How can you see? And hear this. The apostles were passing. And they also said concerning that man. Is it the father that sinned or the mother? And he said, nobody sinned. But for the word of God to come to manifestation. That I passed through this road. That I passed through this route. I passed through here. They said, when Jesus passed through that environment, something great happened. And they said, give God glory. When they went to the parents, the parents said, well, he's an adult, he can speak. Because anyone that converts Jesus will not be allowed to enter into the temple. And they went to the boy, the boy said, well, if that's what you choose, <laughs> if that's what you choose, do, will you still love to be his disciple? And they said, this boy is mad. 
He's mad. Yes, he can say he's mad. I've been here with you, those Pharisees, or whosoever you call yourself. You cannot heal me of my blindness. He had his, his feet turned to heal. He said, go to the water, go and water. I did not carry pure water. I did not carry ever water. I did not carry agorabolous water. We don't carry water around, but we carry healing around. I said, I've healed you. Go to that sea. Go and clean your face. I pray for somebody today. Have you washed your net? I declare today, may your net be clean again. In the name of Jesus. Number 18. When you say, don't wash your net, let me in. Don't say, it is always been difficult to get. And for that reason, I can't get it. Don't ever say, it is always difficult to get. That is the language of the world. What the language can never, uh, can never be established in this kingdom. Are you hearing me? We are in the kingdom of God where everything works in our favor. Bible say, when he giveth quietness, no one can make trouble. Oh my God. When you go on this world and you look at yourself, I say, hold on. I read the scripture that says, when he giveth quietness, no one can make trouble. You say, hold on, hold on. I don't understand. When he giveth quietness, no one can make trouble. You say, hold on, I don't understand. When he giveth quietness, no one can make trouble. You say, hold on, I don't understand. But why is this happening? They said, there is five blood inside of me. When he giveth quietness, no one can make trouble. So, therefore, five blood disappear. It will work. When he giveth quietness, no one can make trouble. They said, there is infirmity in my body. The Bible say, I am the temple of the living God. And the spirit of the Lord dwelleth on my inside. God, why is your temple sick? Why is your temple being afflicted with infirmity? You tell them, I wash no more my net. When you are washing net, it's when you go from one hospital to another. You go to one Babalawa to another. You go to one Agbo places to another. You say, no, I wash my net anymore. I stay where Jesus want me to stay. I wash my net anymore. I do what Jesus want me to do. I wash my net anymore. I stand by what Jesus said I should stand by. I wash my net anymore. I understand what God is saying. And I depend on the word of God. I wash my net anymore. That is how you're supposed to do it. Here this nothing work until when you dive into it. That's correct. Number nine. It simply means that to press forward or press harder. When you hear, don't wash your net yet. Press forward. Number 10. Don't blame anybody for your inability to achieve something good. Blame yourself for not getting it right when you ought to get it. And don't stay on the wing of that blame. Are you hearing me? When you blame yourself for a while, Look for a particular solution that my help coming from the Lord. I will look upon the heap from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. He that make the heavens and the hell. He that keepeth me never sleep nor slumber. That is the word of God. Number 11. Do not shift the blame to any person anymore. When you want to wash your night, you are sleeping blame. Because my father did not send me to school. This is the reason I'm not getting what I'm supposed to get. The most richest man in Africa or in Nigeria is a Nigeria man. He never go to school. Are you hearing me? So you have to understand. Don't say my time has passed. Who told you your time has passed? Who told you because of your age you cannot add quality to yourself? Who told you? Oh my God. You need to understand. And the lastly, you must accept your fault and move ahead. Accept your fault. Tell somebody, say, accept your fault. Move ahead with a better mindset. Say amen to that. That is how it works. That is how it works. Anna refused to wash a net. Anna, she refused to do what? To wash a net. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 6. Let me just paraphrase that. An adversary, adversary also provoke a soul. For to make a fret because the Lord has sought up a womb. Now listen to this. Who sought your womb? You have been open on God for fruits of the womb. 
Are you not going that one demon somewhere is the one that sought my womb? The Bible said the Lord was the one that sought the womb of Anna. For what purpose? For what reason? Why? Because he was waiting for the time that Samuel would be ready. Oh, somebody don't get that, Emma. Oh, my God. You didn't get that, Emma. God stirred the womb. She might have given back to different children, but there was no Samuel. Oh, you don't understand. Bible says, and God, can the media show that for us? First Samuel chapter 1, verse 6 says, And our adversary provoked us so for to make a threat, because the Lord has sought up a womb. If God has opened a womb, she might have given back to children that are not Samuel. But because of Samuel, the Lord shut up the womb. After Samuel, she gave back to many other children. It is not about the lateness in your child bearing. It's about the agenda of God for it. So you need to ask God, why is he delaying? Wait on him. Do not blame your father or your mother. Do not pray the prayer of every father of my father's house for the fact you have surrendered to him. Say, come unto me, all you that labor and every lady I will give you rest. For the fact you have gone to him, say, Lord, I know you shot my wife's womb. You shot my womb for a purpose. I know. May your will be done. If you like, if God is the one that shot your womb, go for high VF. Go for surrogacy. It's not going to work. You only waste the money you're supposed to use to eat until when it's ready. Look and live, my brother, live. Look unto Jesus. And is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. That is only if only you can live. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 7 of 1 Samuel, verse 7 says, And as she he did year after year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so provoke her. The second wife provoke her. What is your adversary provoking you to do? Until you have actually provoked you to go to God in prayer, they have not done well. If they provoke you to go to a palace, they are sending you to where they want you to be. They must provoke you and tell God, say, Lord, Lord, why? Ah, 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 Jesus. All you need is, Lord, you need the prayer of revelation. Open my eyes to see what I need to see. And when some people are about to watch their net, they watch their net with three years. <laughs> Every night, cry. Every day, cry. Year after year, cry. Every season, cry. Must you cry? Hear this. I have let my father love. I have gone to the father of my fathers. And I said, I have given my life to you. There is now the owner, the watcher of my life. Are you listening to me? So whatsoever that happened to people in my generation cannot be part of me. Because of what? I have changed it. Can't, I need two men here very fast. I need two men very fast. I need one other person very fast. They're making three right now. I need the third person here very fast. Now listen to this. This is the father of this man. Come here. Look at this pastor. This is the father. Are you listening to me? This is another father. In the generation of this father, they serve idol. They serve Otumoko. They are the worshiper of Oyamini, Osumini, and so many other things. Okay? They are the worshiper of Amadua. Are you listening to me? A time came that he got the preaching from me. I said, change your foundation. And he looked at his father. Can you look at your father now? Look at him. Just becoming. Just becoming. Change your foundation to a new root. This is a new root for you. This is a new father for you. This is a new one for you. This is Jesus Christ. So when you give your life to Jesus, if anything is wrong with you, don't go back to your father. Go back to your Jesus. Are you listening to me? When you go back to him, Jesus, why is this thing happening to me? Apostle of Jesus said to him, we have followed you all this way. What is our reward? Where is our reward? They ask him, we have left everything and we follow you. Where is the reward? Why must you be suffering when God is your reward? Jesus said, I am your reward. He said to a particular priest in the Bible, they distributed everything. Now. And to the level, I was saying to the level, I saw the priest. They said to the level, he said, I am your reward. You don't have inheritance in all these people. 
You don't have inheritance in their land. You don't have inheritance in their property. But I am your inheritance. When is your inheritance? Why are you now struggling? Then check yourself. The prodigal son said, I will arise. I will go to my father. I will tell my father, I have sinned to you and to the heaven. Oh, my father, he has lavished everything. He said, but my father have everything. He still have. I've taken what I ought to take. Even if I've done mistakes, I started eating the food that is meant for pigs in the swamp. Say no way. I will return to my father. He cannot kill me. Immediately got to his father. The father said he was lost. Now he's found. The elder brother came and said to the father, Say, Father, I've been here with you, so faithful to you. That does not count. What count is a sinner that returns back? God bless you. So you have to understand this. Anna said to herself, I need quite a guest city. To worship you, hello. I bow down my knees. To worship, worship you, hello. Forever, forever, forever. To worship you, Lord. And verse 10 of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 says, Look at this. See. And she vowed a vow and said, Oh Lord of hosts, if thou we indeed look on the affliction of the handmaid, if thou we indeed look at the affliction of the handmaid, look at this, and remember me. She said that unfruitfulness is an affliction. Remember me. Remember me. Vow, vow, not to the pastor, but to God. She saw the pastor, but she was not vowed to the pastor. And she said, no way, my pastor is not vowed. I vowed to my God. Of the handmaid, I remember me. And not forget the handmaid, but we give unto thy handmaid a male child. It was so specific. A male child, say a male child. Shout it very loud and clear. A male child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the day of his life. You give me, I give you. You that you are expecting God to give you tonight. Is it not that you want to use it to do younger for people? You know, I say, I never born. I don't born, no. Mommy, you do that, see, I never born. Say, so you don't see. Come and see what the Lord has done. Are you listening to me? But she was not saying that. She didn't even say that. I'm going to show my second wife that I'm, I'm not parent. He said, she was so focused. I will give to you. Listen to this. And she also made the vow. And there shall no razor come upon his head. She was so specific about what she wanted and how she wanted it to be. Verse 11 says, and it came to pass as he continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked a mouth and Eli prophesied to her and the prophecy came to pass. Number two, Jephthah refused to watch his net. Yes, he was chased out of his father's house, yes. Because of his bed, yes. But he refused to stand on a defeated side of life. Let them chase me out of my father's house. I cannot stand on a defeated ground. <laughs> Here it is. He decided, he decided to start all over again. He decided to start all over again. Judges chapter 11 verse 2 to 10. I will also paraphrase it. He said, Gilead was also had several sons. And when this half brother grew up, they chased Jephthah of the land. You will not get any of our father's inheritance, they said. For ye, you are the son of a prostitute. They told him, oh, her. The son of the prostitute cannot have this. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. Soon, 
He had a band of worthless rebel fellow that follow him. Rebels! People who don't count. The other Bible, uh, other translations said the vain men. So area boys are the people that follow him. You have a vision and the people that follow you are the area boys. You know what we happen? That play will turn to the dungeon of rugged people. But he was able to identify what they carry. That is leadership in things. Some of you went with rebels who went out with people who have no vision and create vision in them. Oh my God, it's worth to be a president. Rebels, very men, people who don't know their left from their right. And he said, you, you have administrative life. There is no one that is born useless. What useless them is the way they grew up in life. What useless them is because of the association. What useless them because it could be, even if your parents are useless you, you can unuseless yourself. You unlock and come out right. Are you still here with me? Are you still here with me? Number three, Jesus told Peter to start all over again. You can start all over again. In Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 7, I will only review verses there. He said, now when he left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for it brought. Peter said, we have been toiling all night. And Jesus said, start all over. <laughs> start all over. Have you decided to stop at the level you are? Start all over. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. You must hear the word of God and follow suit. Don't follow your mind. Some people say, I follow my mind. Your mind might lead you wrongly. The spirit of the Lord is the only one that cannot lead you. Out of your mind, produce good and evil. But out of the spirit of God, produce good things. Are you hearing me? Bible said the heart of man is desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? A man can be with you, hit with you, and be dealing with you, but you will never know. But when the Spirit of the Lord comes in, you will happy. Hear this. It is not too late for you to start all over. But the time, this time, you must have wisdom. Number two, you must have right mind. Number three, you can start with right people and those who know better than you. When you want to start, don't start with your own understanding. Joseph refused to watch his night. This is number four character we are talking about. He was focused on his dream. Number two, he refused to allow his, parent, his present situation to stop his future. Number three, he saw it. He knew it. He accepted it. He didn't know how it would come. But he was determined about his future. Number eight, he didn't allow his dream to go out of his mind even in his difficult days. He didn't allow that to happen. Number nine, in his season of hatred, it depends on his dream, what he have seen. Number ten, in his time of humiliation, in the time of rejection, in the time where everything was not just working out for him, he said, I will not wash my net. If my wife and I have to think of inadequacies when we sold ourselves, when we are about to marry, we will not marry. I said to you, when I was about to marry, it's not too long, just 17 years ago, I didn't have 25,000 Naira in my account. And as at that time, 25,000 Naira is not money. Before that time, I've spent, I've said it before, I spent 80,000 Naira in the clubhouse from Friday to Saturday, 120,000 Naira. I spend it every day. I do so many things with money, even before that year. Maybe five years, six years before that year. And when it was time for me to marry, okay, there was no 25,000 Naira. I opened my first account many years ago. Before that time, maybe seven years before that time, I opened my first account with two million naira. Are you listening to me? Before 2005. Now hear this. But when it comes to 2005, I didn't have 25,000 naira when I want to marry. But I said, I have made up my mind. I must marry. Look and leave my brother leave. Look unto Jesus, Hallelujah. 
It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and hey, look at it. Everybody sing that song with me. My brother Lee. My brother Lee. Look unto Jesus. Genesis chapter 40, verses 14 and 15 says, Genesis 40, 14 and 15 says, And please remember me and do me a favor. When things go well with you, mention me to Pharaoh, so he might let me out of this place. Hey, he said, prison is not my house. It's just a place where nothing could stay. But listen to me. When you go, I have told you what will happen. You will be restored. I have told him what will happen. He will die. When the first man, the chief baker heard that the message for chief buckler was okay, he also said to David, uh, to Joseph, I also had a dream. And the interpretation of his dream was death. He thought that it's going to be a good news. Life after hex word. You have to check yourself. You choose where to go. Verse 15 says, he said, Joseph said, remember me, verse 14. 15 said, I was kidnapped. So kidnapping has been from the time. Who kidnapped him? His brothers. Look at it. I was kidnapped from my homeland. <laughs> the land of Hebrews. And now I am here in prison. But I did nothing to deserve it. Even at that, he didn't lose his conscience. You have to know what you have seen. He saw that my future is bright. Wonderful excellence, how we get there. My future is bright, how we get there. Wonderful, marvelous, how we get there. But my future is bright. Wonderful, 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 excellent, how we get there. My future is bright. future is bright. There are tips to a successful life. Number one, tips to a successful life. Examine yourself and search out your fault. If you want to succeed in life, examine yourself and search out your fault. That's number one. If you want to succeed in life, you must examine yourself. Psalm 19 verse 12 says, How can I know all the sin locking in my heart? Cleanse me from the hidden fault. Examine yourself and search out your fault. Number one, number two, see beyond your physical environment. If you want to have a successful life, you must see beyond where you are. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, B says, But this one I do, that is B, 3B, but this one I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto things that are before. You have to know, you see beyond where you are. Number three, you must identify the reason behind your failure. Don't wash your net. See the reason. Why can't we catch the fish? Number four, you must invest in your personal life and your future. Number five, you must understand the only way up is the way of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, only way up is the way of the Lord. Number five, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Do not depend on your own understanding. Number six, have connection with people you know that they are better than you. Hello? Have connection with people that you know, this one is better than me. Hello? If you work in an environment that is not a challenging environment, you cannot grow. You will only grow beyond the level. You cannot grow beyond the level you are. You remain limited you are. So you have to have connection with people that you know they are better than you. NLT, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Say, get wisdom in all the wisest things you can do. And whatsoever else you do, develop good judgment. Number seven, 
Run away from a wasteful life. Run away from what? The wasteful life. You want to succeed? For you not to watch your net at all times, you must run away from a wasteful life. Whenever money comes into your hand, whenever idea comes into your mind, you must know how to manage. Manage money, manage idea. Money that you don't manage well will be wasteful and you can't gain it back. There are some people when money comes into their hand, their body will be shaking. If somebody see one million right now, it will run mad for five minutes. Nobody has ever seen one million in my generation. They will run mad for five minutes. That is their make. But you have to see beyond one million. You tell yourself, I'm not a millionaire, I'm a billionaire. Continue saying it. Are you hearing me? Continue saying it. And you must work for it. Luke chapter 15 verse 70 say, And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? How we arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. That was why I said, I go to my father with humility. Some children are very proud. Somebody you call your father, is that your pastor? Or your biological father, you go and go to them or you go behind them and begin to bite bite them. If you have done that, go back to them. Are you hearing me? Aaron never go to God. He went to Moses. Forgive me. <laughs> Moses, forgive me. Though you are like a younger brother, <laughs> but forgive me. Say Drominiara. That was the song he sang. Number eight. You must learn to follow divine instruction. When you hear, hear this, don't go to different pastors for medicine. This pastor is good in deliverance, you go there. This pastor is good in the world, you go there. This one is good in prophetic, you go there. Are you a prostitute? Are you into Olosho or Jaskala? Are you doing dreamers in Christianity? It's like you not to know yourself. Bible said, those who know their God are shall do as It's because you don't know yourself. From pillar to post. When some people come, they said, they said to me, who is saying to you? Remember in a church, you are telling your senior pastor, they said, they said, when I go there, anywhere I go, they said, what is that nonsense? Who is saying? Anywhere I go, where are you going? And by the time they return, they say, Ah, sir, my eyes have seen in that place. Your eyes never see, it goes in way. Need down in your house. Pray to God. When you, must you ask, must somebody tell you it about yesterday or coconut in the morning? That is madness. Want to hear what you eat? Don't you know what you have heard? One of my daughters said, My mother said, uh, For this thing that is happening, bring money. I will meet a pastor for you. I said, I told my mother, that he was telling me yesterday, I told my mother, if it have to be with money to go and pay to pastor, he said, hey, please, I'm not going. They will tell you to bring your hundreds, you go and submit. Cut your fingernails, you go and submit. Cut your hand pitted, you go and submit. Cut your what, you go and submit. What is wrong with you? You must learn how to follow divine instruction. How you listen to me. Every basket is not a basket you must put your cross. Some basket will drain your life. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, Proverbs 3 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and then not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Trust the Lord. Number nine, you must, you must not be too forward in your mind and your mouth. You must not be too forward. A lot of people can talk. They talk the things that are not as if they have. Yes, ah, if you see. They don't have anything. No. They have already projected as if they have all. A particular house many years ago, they were telling me, when I was about to get out, they said, robbers used to come here. And I asked the question. I said, why? They said, the man worked in MTN. I said, there was something. But why? They said, anytime the robbers come to that house, they go to that room, that apartment, that flat. I said, why? Something is wrong with that man. And through investigation, they said, when he gets to drinking parlor, he begins to talk about his what. So people, they were drinking together without organized boys. They will come and collect his what. They came to collect his share. 
You go to MTN office, go and work. We are coming to reward. We are your bank. Because of what? He has what is called running mouth. Ah, don't you know? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Hey, hey, we, now we, who be you? What do you know? You get to office, you are employing an office and you are behaving like a boss in the office. They will sack you. And don't come and begin to tell Lord, why do you allow them to sack me? God will tell you, son, why do you blind your eyes to understand it? So you must learn. Number 10, you must learn how to speak good things about yourself on a regular basis. Luke chapter 6 verse 45 says, Luke 6 45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which that is evil. For out of the abundance of her, of the heart is mouth speaketh. Prophesy to your life. Adeleke, you are good today. When you look at the mirror is not there to come here. Are you listening to me? Mirror is not there for makeup alone. Mirror is there to assess yourself. Oh my God, I'm beautiful today. This cloth fits me. You look at yourself. Oh my God, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. I am rich. Oh my, you prophesy to yourself. Oh, I am not a poor man. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, I have something great on my inside. There's a word of God on my inside. I am healed of this plague. I am settled. My marriage is settled. As I'm going out, I'm meeting with a man that will marry me. As I'm going out, I'm meeting with a woman that will marry me. Not as you dress. Oh, when you dress, I say, then go take today. Ah, then go no say, babe, they, who be babe? They will just be sleeping with you. Poco, 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 poco. And when they have you, they abandon you. Babe, they, ah, come, you tell your friend, come and see babe. Ah, new cash don't come. They will cast you and their hook will hook you. A particular person was talking. I think my father in law was sharing something. He said a particular man, he got a story. And when that boy got to a woman, the woman lied and he, about, he was about to pay for the field of prostitution to that lady. And as soon as this man wants to come on the lady, the man said, stand up, stand up, stand up. What thing I want to use for you, they don't use them. And he said, as I see you now, you are empty. They have used you finish. I pray in the name of Jesus, may they not use you. In the name of Jesus. Can you be outstanding everyone under the son of God to me? We need to connect to God today and speak to him in our heart and tell God by your mercy, O oh Lord, from today in the name of Jesus, let your grace work with me. Let your power work with me. I will no longer wash my net. I will wait until my time of change come. I will start by the lake. I will meet with Jesus. I will walk with Jesus. I will hear what he will say to me. I will connect to him. I will stand by him. Are you praying that prayer? I will no longer be in a haste anymore. There are so many students that have chosen wrong career because they are in a haste. Because of what? They want to do this also so because I don't want to wait for next year. They go for another one. I want to cross, but they will never cross. When the opportunity is not given, what do you do? And by the time they come out, they don't have anything to do. And they begin to look. Today is the day. Lord, I will no longer be in a hurry. Do it for me when you are ready to do it for me. Lord, I will not look down on that man or that woman because there is no money, because there is no beauty as I perceive, because this one, I saw future, but there is no money. Oh, begin to tell God, I repent of my sin. Now from today, I accept that. I will not wash that net. I will not go to another river. I will not dive into another sea, dirty sea. I will not guide into that in the name of Jesus. I will not mix up my destiny. Thank you, faithful God. In Jesus' name we pray. Proventure, you are here. If this is not working, you go on this. And when you go on this, it doesn't work. And your heart has been pointing to this is it. Not this. I want you to come forward. I want to pray with you. You fall into that category. I want to pray with you. You have laid your hands on so many things. But they are not just working for you. 
I want to pray with you. It's a great season, great time in God's presence. And you are telling God, I will not be in haste anymore. I will be patient. I will not be impatient anymore. Yes, I will not be impatient anymore. Prayer work for people who understand. You will hear a testimony after now that will shock you that prayer is answering on this Monday. That will shock you. It's going to be detailed testimony. You begin to tell yourself, people that are in the front, Lord, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Teach me your way again. Give me another chance, another opportunity. Lord, please help me. 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 Now I've heard your word. I am ready to follow it. Yes, I'm ready to follow it. I will not watch my, watch my net now. In the name of Jesus, I will watch my net when you ask me to watch the net. You discover in your life you are always impatient. I want to pray for you. You have the spirit of impatience. Are you here? I want to pray for you. I want God to also touch you by himself, not me. You discover that you are not always patient. There is a spirit of impatience in you. I want to pray for you. Oh my God. They were impatient. But when Jesus said to Peter, Peter, he said, restart again. Start all over again. Start all over again. Lord, I depend on you. Give me the spirit of patience. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer, everyone in the front. Paventure, you are here. You have been finding it difficult to serve God. And you want to serve God. But something is telling you it is difficult. Please join them. You have heard this word that is, you know, something is just pulling you back. Something is pulling you back. And what is saying in your heart, all oh, pastors are fake. Christianity is, is a scam. That is what is saying in your mind. Christianity is not a scam. It's the act of Jesus that we believe. I want you to come forward. I want you to tell yourself, Lord, I repent. I repent. Lord, I repent. I will not join those crew in that net that they have retired. They have watched their net. They have hung their net. Oh, Lord, I come to you today. Please come over my life. In the name of Jesus, when God mentions your case, you better come forward and you reveal to God and you release all to God so you can get the best of him. In Jesus' name we pray. Paventure, you are here. You want to give your totality to God or you are connected online. I want to pray for you today. That God should take the totality of your life, of your heart, of your spirit. You are saying, Lord, please come into my life. Lord, please, I need you. Lord, I want you in my life. Maybe that is what you want to do. I want to pray for you. I want to connect to you. I want God to touch your life. But eventually, you have given your life to God and you took it back. I want to pray for you. And the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. See after me. Say, my Lord Jesus, I have come to you today. Because you deliberately brought me here. I have seen myself that I cannot handle it myself. I have tried everything in impatience, but it has not yielded anything. So I call upon you today. Please come into my heart. Please come into my spirit. Please come into my mind. I believe in your word that you are the only savior, not my pastor, not my parents, not my family members, not myself. Oh, my savior. Come into my life. Accept me today. I repent of my sins and I accept you, Lord. For the rest of my life, I say no to sin, no to impatience, no to hunger. In the name of Jesus, I say no to immorality. In the name of Jesus, no to the love of money. In the name of Jesus, I believe you. I stand with you. I stand by you. Help me, Lord Jesus, because I know you have answered my prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. May the record of God in your life be established. Your amen must be louder. May the will of the Lord in your life be established. As you go, the Lord go with you. In Jesus' name we pray.